What's up, guys? I am Lee Morris from fstoppers.com. This is Patrick Hall. And we're about to do a critique the community on wedding photography that is on the fstoppers community. If you would like your pictures to be rated, upload them to your portfolio on fstoppers.com. And then every week, we're trying to keep up with it. We're going to do a new critique the community with a different genre of pictures. We're going to do a rating system of five, one being a snapshot, two being needs work before it hits your portfolio, three being a solid image. It's actually a pretty good... Uh, rating four is excellent five is world class let's go to the first picture all right and just to give you guys a heads up we both started off as wedding photographers so i yes. feel pretty confident that if there was ever a genre that we are capable of uh, judging, of judging and, and having an this opinion about genre. this is definitely it. yes all right so here's our first picture it looks like uh possibly a first dance yep um I'm i think ready I, when you yeah, are I'm ready. three one. two one three three we right. agree I, I would say like this is probably a three and a half for me. It's definitely a, a solid image. Um, um, I, I think it's a solid image. I might give it like a three and a half, um, but we don't do half scores. Um, I think there's nothing that's blowing me away about it. I'm not, it's not an unforgettable image by any means. It's just, it's good. Yeah, I think it's a solid image. The one thing that kind of bothers me that would keep this from being like a four it's just I feel like there's so much room above their head, I realize they're getting the chandelier in, but it's not the sort of chandelier that's so incredible that, does that not bother you at all? It doesn't with the bother image? me. I agree that the chandelier is not very impressive, but I, if this was zoomed in just on the couple, I might give it a two, especially with its black and white conversion at this point, just because I feel like you can't really see any detail in the background or anything. Uh, the black and white's kind of the trendy film, crushed black. I white. like it, yeah. It's, it's, it's a very high contrast. It looks kind of like film. And I, to me, what brings this image together is actually getting the entire room and the chandelier in there. But I agree, the chandelier's not great. All right, let's go to the next one. It's a pose picture, obviously. Ready when you are. Oh, yeah. Three, two, one. Three. Three as well. Um, I'm not sure what I can really say about this. I think the lighting looks nice. I'm trying to decide if this is uh, lit with a strobe or if this is just naturally lit from a window on the left. Um, the reason why I kind of think it's a window is, is that, that highlight on the, I don't know. This is kind of one like of those ones. Yeah. It's, it's done really well if it is strobe. Yeah, I mean, I, I love all of the hard light coming in and that it, it looks really natural. Um, it's very modern looking, which I tend to like in my own photography. Um, you know, I think the location, it's, it's clean, it's pretty. If this was shot on the day of a wedding, like great work, <laughs> you really found a good place to shoot. But I don't know that the location is so great that it would push it into that four category. Yeah, so... It's not, it would be a great image on your website, but it's not one of those like, this is going to be printed as a poster and put at my booth at right. a, at yeah, a yeah. It's just a solid image, so you should be proud of it, but it's not blowing anybody's mind. I do have to say, mind. I mean, I, I don't like to pose people, the word pose. I think they look in a great, they look like they're posing in a great position. Like it's it looks very natural, natural, and if you force them to do this position, good work, because it looks very natural. That's true. I've tried to do the slight kiss and slight dip, and uh, it doesn't turn out that well. Next up. Oh, what's going on here? So this is clearly like a uh, styled shoot. Yeah. Um, I don't know that this is the day of the wedding. I would never have enough time to do this, but <laughs> yeah, instead of an engagement shoot, maybe they did an after the wedding shoot with the, like a trash the dress sort of thing. Yeah. I'm ready when you are. This one's tough for me. I don't. I don't even I, really know what's going on in this picture. Like, is, is he trying to get away from her and she's saying, no, you have to marry me? I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I know what I'm going to do. All right. Three, two, one. Three again. Three as well. Yeah. It's, it's fine, but. Um, I think, and this is, it's good compared to where people could go with it. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> But it's one of those things where it's it's well done. It's lit really well. The, yes. the HDR, it's a little too much for me. I think you could add a little contrast to make it look a little nicer. It is definitely in this like advertisement, editorial, composite style that's very popular. Um, I don't really understand what's going on, but at the same time, I could see a bride saying like, I love that the photographer 
would be willing to do something like this with us if we hired them. I agree. It kind of stands out from the competition. Yeah, it's just different, and that's that's why I like it. I and think if it's you saw solid. it on the website, you wouldn't be like, whoa, that's really poorly done. No. It's just a three. Sure. Next up. Okay, this is funny because this, to me, looks like something I would shoot. Like, it goes it in looked, that direction. Yeah. And yours would just have more neon orange skin tones. I always give Patrick crap for going a little crazy with his colors. I don't think if you look at my pictures, there's, it's not as bad as you think. But. All right, you ready? Uh, sure. Three, two, one. Three. Wow. I think we're going to be giving a lot of threes today. I, I think uh, it's obviously a beautiful location. The lighting is awesome on this. The pose is a little fake and awkward to me. And then the couple themselves, it's just not that like perfect model-y couple that is going to be in your portfolio forever. Nobody's going to be offended by this image, but I also don't think this image is going to book you so much work. It's, there's, there's no emotion. There's no feeling. It's just a pretty shot. It's good, but... I think that's good that that got brought up now because a lot of what we're going to base all of our images, the ratings of all these images on is technical skill, composition lighting and coloring, um, but with weddings in particular, uh, especially this critique, the community, emotional attachment has to be something that rates really high up. Yes. Because you have to get people that do not know this couple, potential clients, you need to get them to look at these images and fall in love with the emotion. Yeah, I, I want that for my wedding. And I don't know that anybody's gonna see this picture and say that. They're, they're going to say, like, oh, it's no, a good it's, photographer. It's a good sunset. No, it's right. the water, and we're going to be in a similar location. I kind of feel like their noses touching is a little weird. That's that's the thing. The pose is awkward. Like, obviously, this couple doesn't feel comfortable in front of the camera. The photographer's doing their best. Like, this is something that we would definitely do ourselves. But the couple is just a little awkward, and that is coming so across. So for an image out of their wedding... Good job. Great. Like you yeah, this of is course. great. Of course. But if you were to take this the next step further and say, does this belong in your portfolio? Is this in the front of your website? I think it does Maybe, belong in your portfolio. But it might be picture number 10 yes. or 20. Agreed. It's not going to be the perfect couple yep. to sell your work, but uh, solid three. Mm. So this is, this is interesting because it's similar to the last one, but uh, obviously the couple is now a much smaller part of the scene. Yeah. I'm ready when you are. All right. <laughs> Three, two, one. Three. Please what well. a surprise. We, I, I'm blaming Chelsea who picked these pictures. If you pick 23 star images, you're fired. All right. What do you have to say? I think the pose is much more natural, although we are backed up much further away. So one little tip I've learned is that if you find that your couples are not good at posing or, or interacting with each other very well, you can actually shoot a little wider and your eye isn't pulled straight to that unnatural connection. If they're touching noses here, you wouldn't even know. Yeah. The thing that bothers me with this image that would, again, keep it from being like a four is I just feel like the lighting event after working with Elia on landscapes could be so much better in this scene. Like, there's not a lot of background going on. It's kind of simple. Yeah. But I could just imagine light hitting the side of this mountain or cliff and making the scenery a little more dramatic, whereas this looks like you were there 30 minutes later than the optimal light for the background. That's not to say that you can't darken it and make a moodier shot, which is kind of where this goes, but... Also, something interesting about this is I'm trying to decide what was processed in this image because the couple appears to be naturally lit but the foreground and the sky appears to be like abnormally dark compared to how See, i feel like they're backlit there's like a strobe behind them firing into the umbrella or something there's no there's, edge there's light around them, there but... yeah there's certainly not backlit but i guess my looks... my point is is that it appears to me that either a strobe was placed to the right of them and then photoshopped out later which being that they're this far away, I don't think that happened. Or I think that the foreground and the background, sorry, the foreground and the sky have just been like darkened a lot. I don't think it's bad. I think it might've been, it, it could have been done a little bit better if you spent some time on it. But the truth is like, if, if this was actually shot during a wedding, you're not gonna be able to like stand around and wait for the sun. And so a lot of it, I don't want to say that wedding photography is luck, but it's like it's putting yourself in the best situation you possibly can in that moment. And then there's some luck of like, is it going to be a 
three or a four level image, you know, based on like. Does the couple look good? Is their yeah. interaction great? Was the lighting and everything perfect? The the 20 minutes they gave me to work with. Yeah. Um, is the location that the wedding's at even good? Yeah, yeah. How many times have you had an amazing bride and groom, but they're in this unattractive place outside, and, and all of a sudden you're exactly. like, man, if this was last week's wedding, it would have been a, a four or five star image. Next up. This shot is uh, posed. There's obviously some strobe light being used here. A lot we of thought went into of, this. A lot of posed images. I'm not seeing many reception or yeah. no ceremony. Chelsea shots. did tell me that the, I, I haven't looked at the post, but she did say that they were almost all posed images that people submitted. I guess it's easier to feel excited about those because you were. In yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you're in control. You put. Keep in mind though that the images we're showing make up such a small percentage of the day. Yeah. I feel like 90% of the time I'm not in control of what they're doing and yeah. you're having to capture you have to get the best the, images yeah. of the day. Ready when you are. I bet you'll never guess what I'm going to rate this one. I'm kind of between numbers. Um, I am too, but... Maybe I'll, 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 I'll give it the correct rating. <laughs> Three, two, one... Okay, so <laughs> the correct rating is a 2.5. Oh, I was going to give it a 3.5. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I kind of wish the stained glass was brighter. Um, I, I feel like a classic picture like this, you may want to show more of her dress. I mean, you can't, though. See, this is one of these situations where if you were hired by some dress manufacturer to take the most perfect commercial image, yeah. then you wouldn't go to this church or you'd pay to have the pews removed. But you're shooting a wedding, and that's it's, it's this interesting thing. And because I'm a wedding photographer, I know that I rate wedding pictures unfairly. A lot of images that I would say, like, that's not good enough for your portfolio, when I know that it's taken at a real-life wedding, and you it have is like good the, enough. You have the church lady kicking you out. Exactly. And she's like, there's another wedding coming in. You guys have to go. Yeah. They really wanted a picture in their church. Yes. If, if somebody was hired professionally to go out and get this one shot, it wouldn't be good enough to put on your commercial portfolio, but for weddings, I think it is because uh, I think it's I think it's a very unique shot. I think the photographer um, had an uh, interesting idea. I love the mood of it. Um, stuff like this, you know, this is what makes a wedding photographer great versus just somebody who's able to just capture things as they happen. So they put a lot of thought into this and came up with something really cool. It's just unlike other genres, we're having to read all of that into this. We this are. It's a little been, unfair. This could have been during an hour-long session, and maybe <laughs> there were true. other... Maybe they were hired to shoot for a dress manufacturer. I don't know. But uh, I don't think so. I, I, I... I don't know that I could push this into four, though. Like, this this is like a solid three okay. or just slightly below a three to me. Okay. I could see this image being replaced within a year or two of your portfolio if this is on your website. Yeah, I love I love the pose. I love the lighting. I love the mood. It's just like it's a it's bumming me out a little bit that the pews are in the way and like if you could come down a little bit more and shoot up and get more of the stained glass in there behind. I don't know. Maybe you even put a strobe outside or use the sunlight in the stained glass to really light that thing up. But the rest yeah. of the building is dark. Obviously, all these things could make it a four or five image. But for what it was, it I, I'd be happy with that. And for the type of image this that this is, being that there's not much color here, if you really pop this in black and white, I think you might like it more. Yeah. You might not be worried about the dark top anymore. I see the stained glass and my natural <clears throat> tendency is to say yeah. like that should be brilliant and that yeah. should be popping because it's that's what stained glass is. But yeah. you're right, if it was black and white and you dodged and burned the stained glass a little more, maybe it would be a little more favorable to me, but it's still a solid three. Next up. Mm, another posed picture of the bride and groom. What a surprise. I know what I'm going to rate this one. And again, I have to keep going back to the system and saying, do you want a picture on your portfolio? Does it represent something that's going to make a connection with future clients and book you? Or does it belong on a website like WPJA where you could potentially win an award? Like, that's got to be the caliber. Even for something that is done spur of the moment quickly with very little time. Like, I think the standard needs, still needs to be pretty high for great wedding work. All right, I'm ready. All right. Three, three two, two, one. All right. I knew you were going to give it a three, but I understand, like, a two. two and a half is, I'm sorry, two. Two and a half is, is kind of where I'd be on this. I don't, 
I like the idea, and I, I gave it a three just because, like, it's fine. It's just a little weird to me that, like, it's kind of cropping off the edge of the tree. It's a little weird to me that you can see the strobe pop on the ground. Like, that could have been masked out so much more easily. I think the picture might have been better, too, if the photographer had laid on the ground and shot up so that you could see the trunk of the tree and the silhouette of the sky. That's what I was thinking. If you could even get the bride and groom to be above the horizon line, yeah. maybe, it would just make it look more powerful and epic and strong. Yeah, it definitely doesn't. Yeah, I don't know. I might give it a two now as well. An image like this, between. too, like, I, I'm not a big fan of when things are backlit and they clearly should be in shadow, I'm not a big fan of, like, trying to pull out detail from a very underexposed foreground element. To me, it's like the tree is in this neutral gray. I personally am not a big fan of that type of processing. Um, yeah. It just looks kind of flat, and it, it, it looks... It's got, like, a kind of like an aged, Yeah, it's got this aged it. look to it, which... Again, it's my personal preference. Yeah, it, it definitely has potential. I've taken pictures like this myself. It's just, for all the reasons we've mentioned. It's, like it's and just, and it's not really about them anymore. You, besides her being in a white dress, you almost can't tell that it's a bride and groom. It's, yeah, the groom is really disappearing in this shot. You can't really see him at all. You might want to switch them so that he's getting hit on his shoulder with the most intensity of light. I kind of feel like though, if you took this raw file back and you just gave it more contrast and a little more pop, it could it could be an image that you do like in your portfolio, but mm -hmm. the way I'm looking at it here on the screen, I'm just, it's pushing me more towards the negative side of the scale than the positive side. You think there's any flash pop in this? No, it's gonna look like this it. This looks totally natural. Oh, man. All right, here we go again. Three, two, one, three. three. Um, it's okay. There's definitely no emotion at all on their face. It looks like they are not happy to be taking this picture right now. This is the same face they'll make in 10 years when they're eating <laughs> dinner together. And <laughs> but, but the picture is so beautiful that even with the horrible emotion, I give it the three just because... I think people might overlook it, but man, if they were touching foreheads or a little smirk or they're going in for the kiss or, I mean, their arms look like they're, they're in the middle school dance, you know, and yeah. the teacher's about to come over and say, stop touching torsos. And this is one of those situations where they, the photographer put them in this position, they saw the shot, I think they made a lot of good decisions. Well, I'm because impressed that they were able to get detail in the sky and in the couple. Either there's a reflector going on here, there's a strobe going on here, there's a lot of recovery and light. Yeah, hey, I think just with the raw files now, you can pull, you can really push stuff like this more than you could eight years ago. I haven't edited one of my weddings in raw ever. So I used to shoot JPEG years ago, and then once I started shooting raw, I started hiring somebody to do it. So I don't really know what's capable when it comes to pictures like the little, this. This little guy, little statue kind of bothers me. I don't know why. I didn't even see that. I feel like though, like the, the, the handrail here looks so fancy and the mountains and the lighting looks so cool yeah. that to me, if you could have darkened it just a little and then had the slightest flash pop just to make it a little edgier. Mm, I might fight you on that. Like I know that's what you would do. And honestly, that's probably what I would do too because I wouldn't be thinking, hey, I can pull these details back in post. I definitely need to throw a flash pop in there, but I love the the vibe of the colors and the tonality in this image. Like it feels very classic yeah. and very romantic until you look at the couple's faces. But I can I can step back and look at this and say like, man, that's a really beautiful shot. It's just I I, I would probably give this a and, four. And the emotion is such a subtle thing. It could be yeah. the slightest laugh or smile, yeah. or her showing a little more affection to him, yeah. and him kind of receiving that energy, yeah, yeah. that would push it over the edge. But yeah. the way it is right now, they're just like, don't laugh at each other, like keep a straight face, let's get this photo done. And this is when, if you're shooting this couple, you pick on them for looking like this. You make a joke about the middle school yeah. dance, you tell him to grab her butt, you tell him to whisper something dirty in her ear, you make a joke that makes them laugh. Even if, like, sometimes I'll say stuff that's so stupid that they laugh at me. And that's fine. Whatever it takes to get the shot. But, like, this this is, 
feels very uncomfortable to me. I always tell my clients, they always say I hate pose pictures. Everyone hates pose pictures. But I always tell them that I will pose them and position them in the best scenery possible. But then I will try to get them to react with each other so that you're actually capturing kind of a candid moment in a very controlled situation. And I feel like that's what this is lacking, is mm -hmm. that, that energy. Wow. That's interesting. I'm trying to figure out where this is. Is that rain? Kind of looks like it. Let me see. This one's kind of hard for me to rate. This, yeah, this one is a tough one. I think this one, this might be one of the ones too that would really, I'd like, I'd like to see it in black and white. Although the background is so contrasty with the bright lights and the dark shadows, I wonder if the couple would, would pop out from that background in black and white or they would yeah. just be lost in the background. But something about it, I guess, I guess what I don't like Well, is, do you want to rate this first? Yeah, I guess. All right. Oh, I'm so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be nice. Three, two, one. You went four? Yeah, I went four. I wanted to give it a three and a half. Um, like, definitely we have the emotion in the couple. The lighting on the couple is fantastic. My situation is, like, the location itself just isn't quite there. It's it, not the postcard shot of the city. It's not, but it's still better than some of the other stuff that we've seen. And that's why... That's why I wanted to be a little nicer to this one because when I compare it to some of the other ones, like if I gave the one with the couple under the tree a three, then this one's certainly a four. Yeah. Um, but it's like, ugh, the photographer did everything right. It's just the location itself is not What great. kind of throws me off or makes me wish that there was something more you could do with this is it just feels like there's not enough separation. And either you shoot more shallow depth of field and try to blur the background out more and make it more abstract. I don't do this a lot, but maybe you, you, you change the white balance and then change the color of your strobe so that maybe the city goes bluer or warmer mm. and you can somehow control them. I just feel when I look at this arm's length away, it's so busy with a lot of stuff that's not that important. And then you have stuff like the rain coming in, which is kind of cool, but it, yeah. it's almost like there's, to me, too much going on and all of that stuff going on isn't the romantic sort of busyness that makes you study a photo for minutes to you know see yeah. everything. It's Instead, just the couple looks so good. The lighting on them yeah. is so good. So I don't know if you can get closer to them and allow the background to to go blurrier by you know just compressing the uh, the depth of field a little bit more, or there's a coloring thing or it's a processing thing. Or, I just keep going back to all of the, these lights in the bridge and the Yeah, I, I do the, I wonder if the cranes you and went everything. backwards and you shot at 200 millimeter at 2.8, if you could get the city behind them or like you said, these lights on the left side to just, you know, turn into the bokeh orbs. And then all of a sudden it's, it's like a completely different looking shot. But right now it, it, it I don't immediately think this, but as I study it, I'm like, they're kind of posing in front of a chain link fence. Yeah. You know? And I, on I the right, it I looks cooler. Plexi. Well, on the right, it is, but this is, looks like chain it's link. Like something up here. It's like chain link and plus. I don't know. It's good. It's very good. It's just like, oh, I just want to take that couple and put them in a slightly different spot. Change their wedding ceremony location. Yeah, don't get married there. <laughs> That's a really good black and white conversion. I'm not, once again, I'm like, how in the world did they do this? You think this is just a single raw shot, natural light? Probably. I mean, you never know these days. And I don't even know if I rate things that much based on that. I just want to know that it's done well. All right, I'm ready. One, two, three. Maybe another four. Yeah, I gave it a four. I really like this one. I really, really like this one. Um... Again, something fishy is going on uh, with the image. You obviously, you can't take a picture out of a window without light on your subject and have detail on your subject, but there is detail on the subject. Um, so it appears like if, if you look around the room, if you look at like the front of the tables, they're almost totally black. But then if you look at the couple themselves, they have detail on their skin. So it looks like it was dodged back, but I love it. And I love that there's detail out the window, but it's not so much detail. Like this is one of these pictures that if it was color, I probably wouldn't like it as much. 
but it's a really nicely done black and white conversion. There's detail right where it needs to be, but not like so much detail. It still looks natural outside, I guess. So I like it. I, think I look excellent. at this image and I think that this possibly could be like a first look. And I know with many first looks, if that's what this is, a lot of times you're, you're, you're strapped for locations to shoot at. You're like, sure. where can we do it? So I think if that's what this is, yeah. it's a very clever way of just using the decor and the reception room where the party's about to happen mm -hmm. to have like a meeting space. Um, you know, and who knows with the clouds out there, it could have just been awful weather and you, you're not able to shoot outside. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's solid. I, I feel like I kind of lose them a little bit, kind of like the last picture. I feel like if the windows were totally blown out in this one little area or if the camera was lowered just enough, I just, I kind of feel like it's a little busy, but the way that they framed everything out, I feel that uh, I do like the foreground elements. I love the chairs going into darkness and everything. What, do you, what would you think if they had pushed the tables aside, taken a vertical shot, and posed them right in the middle of that tall vertical window? Would you like that better or worse? I mean, I think that could have potential too. It's just the matter it of moving. It seems like a totally different shot. But yeah. Yeah, both seem like good ideas. I don't know if I would have thought to do this, probably because I'm not thinking what can I do in post. I'm always thinking like, what can I do to get a perfect exposure right now? So I probably would have strobed them. It would have lost the mood a little bit. So I really I think what makes this. this work well though is just the, uh, the window treatment. Like everything you're looking at looks fancy and yep. grand. If, these had, if this picture had no window treatment, it's just square windows and look more corporate and clean. Oh yeah, it'd be all. I, I don't think it would be that great, but so three and a half? Three and a half. All right, let's go. Next image. Another couple Man. under a tree. Hmm. Chelsea, you're so fired. <laughs> I don't want this to affect the rating process, but right off the bat, I think this is the best photo of a couple next to a tree we've seen today. Have we seen more than two? I've seen like two or three, I think. Um, all right, you ready to rate? Yeah. Three, three two, two, one. one. I so want to, gosh, I, I think three fives where it is. I was torn between going with a four. Yep. Um, this to me is like a killer shot if you shot it the day of the wedding. If this has any kind of like emotional attachment to them, maybe they had their wedding nearby where they got proposed to or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is on her dad's farm or something. Like who knows the reasons, but that to me is just, it could be a much more powerful image the lighting is great. You can see, like, look at the highlights and the trees and the shadows. It's like, I think this picture could almost be even better if it was in color, if the light was great. Mm. Maybe the light wasn't great, and then they really enhanced it with black and white. But I feel like, after working with Elia Licardi, leading lines are everywhere. I feel mm -hmm. like it has a lot of solid weight in the way that it's positioned. Um, I'd like to see this shot, like I like it just as it is, but I'd like to see the shot even wider. Does that get you excited at all? Like moving back even more, seeing more of the road, putting the tree on like the, the left side, you know, like a third uh, on the left, and then having the couple either move forward or the couple is just kind of like a little, a little thing right, right in the uh, sky like they are now. One thing to bring up, just because I know you guys out there hearing us do this critique and you want to take as many tips out of it as you can. One thing that's important about shooting wider is that this is the two by three crop that comes out of your camera. Imagine if this was the picture they chose for their album and it had to be that eight by 10, which is considerably more square. Hmm. Imagine if now you had to crop off 10% on I'm either side. I'm pretty sure side. this is cropped to an eight by 10 size. Uh, okay, it doesn't have the yeah, borders on yeah. it. Okay, so, so we're is, looking at it on the iPad. So. Um, just keep that in mind if you're ever shooting this sort of stuff that sometimes it's nice to go like two or three millimeters wider than what you think just because unlike your commercial work that you give to a client and they retouch like crazy or you put on your website, your wedding clients are going to print these in all different sorts of file sizes, so yeah. um, aspect ratios, so keep that in mind when shooting. Um, I, think, I think it's a solid three. I can see where you went with the four. It's still the best tree photo we've had in all of these. Next up. So this one, uh, it appears to be maybe posed, but man, it's done really well. You know, this is uh, this is hard to pull off, especially with children. Um, I'm not. A, I'm, I mean, this could have. It it all depends on the personality personality of the bride. 
So many girls that I know would never do this. But then I do know those that are very touchy-feely people, and they mm -hmm. would grab the girl with their hands, and like maybe this was a sincere moment. Mm -hmm. If um, it is, that's even better. It's hard to get the girl to, to ever do that, the little girl. Yeah, yeah, it's a great expression on both of their faces. You ready? Uh, yeah. Three, two, one. Four again. Mm -hmm. I'm just itching to give a four, <laughs> and I don't feel confident enough to actually give a four on any of these. I think this image is solid in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's kind of a nice break from all the other pictures that we've seen in that you need these type of pictures to book work. Yeah. You can't yeah, just yeah. have a portfolio full of the posed pictures of people under trees and cityscapes and mountains and stuff. You gotta have the whole gamut from the day. And this is a great preparation shot. They're probably about to go down the aisle. She clearly just got in her dress, has the veil. They're ready to go. This feels like a shot to me that you'll have in your portfolio your whole life. I don't see, the only thing that would, that would make me retract that is the bride's outfit, now that I think about it. Like, this is something that I don't see as a man, but the trends and wedding dresses and stuff are a big deal. And a lot of brides will see stuff like this and go, oh my gosh, the sleeves with the flowers, it's so, I don't know if that's in style or not. Maybe this was taken 20 years ago. Maybe this was taken last weekend. I don't know. I think where you're wrong with that is she is Indian. So this is from an oh, Indian, Indian wedding, and I okay. think uh, you're absolutely right. Like We've had people complain about the bride's dress, and they pick out the craziest things to critique that bothers a girl looking a bride, at the image. but not anyone But else. when you have something like a cultural element, like it's yeah, an yeah, Indian yeah. wedding, I think um, what I've learned is many people shoot only Indian weddings. Like It's kind of a genre that you get into. Yeah, yeah. But if you shoot all religious weddings in general, um, I think seeing that dress in, in, in your portfolio is not going to offend anybody. They're going to... At the moment, no, but maybe, maybe like, I don't know if you look back at your parents' wedding album. Yeah. My parents my mom might have insane. My mom might have wore that, but there was no reason for her to be wearing it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, my dad was wearing, like, a white zoot suit. He looked crazy. Um, you can't have pictures like that in your portfolio. we got to put that in the next critique. That's <laughs> true. I'll just slip my dad in there <laughs> looking insane. All right, next the, the other, one last thing. The other yeah. reason I don't think this would leave your portfolio is because this interaction is kind of, I don't want to say rare, but you're probably going to have a hard time getting a better picture of this sort of thing to put in your portfolio. Whereas your pose pictures are going to change every year, every two years. Yeah, yeah. Your, uh, your decor shots, you probably have very few of those in your portfolio, but when you shoot super high-end weddings and you get that cake, you know, that may change every couple of years yeah, too. Yeah. But this sort of thing. It's very timeless. It is a very timeless image. And then we go to very <laughs> contemporary. I'm ready when you are. I'm excited. <laughs> three, two, one. You went three. Are right. you out of your mind? Um, no. What? I, How are you going to give this a four and the last one a three? This looks like commercial photography to me. It's what like are you talking about? everything's lit well and sharp and the lines. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Why is she holding a skateboard? But part of me thinks that, like, <laughs> that, was, that was her decision. I don't think the photographer was like... Nothing about this image. The pose, the lighting, the location. None of it's a four. It's fine. It's a three-star image. But for you to say that this image is better than the last one that we just looked at is crazy to me. No bride is going to see this shot and hire you for that. Whereas the last shot, brides will hire you for that. I, I don't know if Anybody I... with a camera is capable of taking this picture. It's fine. It's lit well. But it's like there's certainly nothing. There's nothing to it. It's just a couple looking at each other in a strange... Area. Okay, now I, I do agree that we've talked about the emotion the whole time. Yeah. The emotion is a little weird. I kind of wonder if this is even a real couple, this is a real wedding. Oh, I think it definitely is. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's too weird. Like, nobody would, nobody would set this up for their portfolio. I'm trying I to think figure out where they thing. are. Like, are they Maybe at a skate park? Maybe they're at a skate park. I don't know what, what the lines are. I just think from a photographic level, it's done really well. It's sharp, it's clean. The lighting on him, it's all natural, but it just yeah, looks so just, good. It's fine, and it's a cloudy day. And it's, it distinguishes, it, this picture distinguishes itself from everything else that we've seen. Like, it's quirky and weird, but maybe that's the niche that you find. I always feel like I'm harping on people to, like, stand out more on their wedding photography. It's so easy 
to be the Instagram photographer like everybody else. It's so easy to be the timeless black and white guy. It's so easy to kind of do what we do and light everything and make it look very modern. I'm with you, but this isn't a good example of standing out in my opinion. And whoever took this picture, I'm not saying it's a bad picture. It's a fine picture I, I might put in. I probably wouldn't put it in my portfolio. It's not the market I'm going for. I don't think this is the high end wealthy bride, wealthy parent type market, but right. that, that doesn't matter. Like if, if this is your clientele, then a younger couple might get excited about this picture. But the thing is, and I feel like looking at this, he's an attractive guy. She looks like she could be a very attractive girl mm -hmm. and they're at a crazy interesting location. Mm -hmm. You throw the skateboard down and you have them look at each other and you mm -hmm. do something different. Mm -hmm. That might've happened in the same session you could wind up with a really interesting graphical like picture that looks very different from anything else That's that you true. see. That's true. I might like that more. Like I think it bothers me a little bit that I can only see the side of their face. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that this you image can't. is bad. It just means that I would like to see something else also. Um the skateboard's fine. If that's what the bride's into, you got to do what your client wants. It's just I mean, you could also I still I still think this is like a three and a half four star image, All right. um, but it just opens up so many possibilities. If you had her standing on the skateboard and she's smiling and he's like walking next to her, you could have this cool candid mm. shot too. I think there's so much possibility here. I want you to go do a skateboard photo bride shoot and show me how not cheesy it is. You put a bride on the front of a bike and it looked pretty cool. That's true. So, But riding a skateboard is a different thing. All right, next image. Yes. Ooh. Now, I feel a little unfair about this one because I just commented on this guy's picture two days ago. I mean, that... It's, I don't have the element of surprise. Like, I've never <laughs> seen this. I've actually studied that image for a while. Ready when you are. Hmm. Are you going to be mad with me, though? I, I don't... Because I, mean, I rated this, and I'm trying to remember what I rated it on the website. If you rate it different on live TV than what you already rated it on the computer, you've, you've lost all credibility. Okay. Three, Three, two, one. Five. I give it a five. Whoa. I can't remember if I rated it a four or five, but it's in that realm. Okay. I think the comment I left this guy was this was one of the best photos I've ever seen of a dress hanging. Like, I might agree with that. I it's agree not, that. it doesn't have the emotional element of like, there's no human in here. So yeah. there's no human element. Yeah. But for me, like this shows, this is grand. Uh, the dress on a girl, I think that dress would look a little crazy. But in this context, it's all so high end that if you're going for high end weddings and you're trying to present yourself as a solid photographer that's capable of the highest level of photography for you know, a bride, mm -hmm. this shot is the best dress shot you could have. I mean, I think it's done really well. Um, I think everything's so interesting. My eye can go everywhere and find interest. And in, mm -hmm. even the blown out sides, I think it's, it's pretty unique. Um, here's my issue. If you, so we say level five is world class. And I could definitely agree this is a world class image, there's no doubt. But we also use another word, which is unforgettable. Memorable. Memorable is a little different than unforgettable, but this is certainly a, a, a great dress image. It may be the best dress image I've ever seen also. But the fact of like what you're shooting and what it is, I have a really hard time giving any dress shot hanging from a chandelier that's been done a billion times a five star. I'm not offended that you did. I, I have no problem giving this a four and a half star, but I guess I'm trying to think, like, if you had a couple here posed perfectly, would you give it a five? Or Maybe not. And see, that's my point, is that I think you know how hard it is to get a dress shot that looks this compelling, so you're giving it the benefit of the doubt. You're giving it a little bit of extra of a rating. I'm not offended by the five, but to me, if this was on a commercial photographer's website, you'd never rate this a five in a million years. No, no. So that's why I gave it the four. But, but I think awesome. memorable and what was your word? Unforgettable. unforgettable. I think this may be an unforgettable mm. shot in terms of like dresses for weddings. I think it's that good. But yeah, but how often are you like, man, like you, you don't remember the, the top 20 uh, 
wedding dress images of all time, but I bet you could remember all 20 of the top 20 football shots of all time. You know what I mean? Like every single one's probably burned into your brain of like, whoa. I just think going through this critique, there should be so many other parts of the wedding that aren't represented here. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those areas. You have, if you're hired to shoot the preparation, you have to get a shot of the dress hanging. Mm -hmm. And this is as good as you possibly can do for yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. And I think if you have a five-star portfolio and whole, this picture is fits right in. on there. It fits right and in. And so I don't want to be unfair with, if that's true, then how could you ever get a five-star image of anything without a person in it? Could you ever get a five-star image of a cake? Could you ever get a five-star yeah, image of the venue? You, could you get a five-star image of maybe the Maybe not on a wedding day is my point. Is like you could, and I bet if I go to Vera Wang's website, and I bet there's a five-star image of a dress laying on some, or, you know, yeah. it exists. Yeah. But a team of people set up the scene, and sure, it's perfect, sure. and they worked on a week on it. Whereas like these shots, this guy probably figured this shot out in two minutes and then had to move on to something else, yeah. which is the reason you're giving it a five, and it deserves it for wedding photography. But in the grand scope of photography overall, I give it a four. So on your deathbed, you're going to remember this. Yeah, on your deathbed. <laughs> I, am, I am now. I am now. All right. Next. Mm. This, is, <laughs> this shot is very interesting to me because it's super clever, but then it has so many issues also. <laughs> uh, oh man this, this is gonna <laughs> three two one yeah I, I was thinking two and a half so i give it a three he gave it a two um so this shot how can i say this without offending people this shot is clever it's obviously like they they Put some work into like lining this up and everything, but it looks cheesy and cheap to me. And the fact that they didn't smooth out the ring, the fact that they didn't take all the scratches off the ring is huge. The fact that the the diamond isn't really lit and it's sitting on sand, it just it looks cheap to me. But it's a very clever shot. Do you agree with that? Yeah, to me, this, like, I imagine taking the shot, because I love taking ring shots. It's like the time of the day where I can kind of chill out, really focus on something completely different, like product photography. <laughs> and it allows you to, in, in many ways, be the most creative. Like, I actually bring a little kit to my weddings with all kinds of backgrounds and stuff that I can tweak. And I know shooting this sort of thing, that if this is done in camera, like, it's kind of hard to even imagine how it is done in camera. But getting this lined up like that seems like it would take so long. I would waste 30 minutes trying to get this to happen. And then the payoff isn't even that great. To me, I look at this image and it's kind of like a novelty. It's kind of a shtick. It's yes. kind of a like a clever idea that maybe, in my opinion, you shouldn't really elaborate too long on. Right. And if you do this, it's fine. Maybe this was their idea or maybe you did this before and they saw it and they said, hey, can you reproduce that shot you did? Yeah. I don't know that I'm going to put this on my website. I'm with you. I feel I, like you could yeah. put these rings... Rings are difficult, too, because every wedding you shoot rings, and no matter how fancy the wedding is, you could pick up the most expensive ring, and sometimes rings just, they're not portfolio worthy. Sure. They look weird. They're, some of them are from, like, grandparents, and they've been in the family. They're scratched up. Some just look dated. Um, this one's obviously, these, these look gold. I don't know if the guy's band is gold, but um, for me, for a ring shot to make my website, it's got to be just super clean, perfect, timeless. It's usually around flowers or some really cool texture. And this, it's like they're at the beach. Like you said, they didn't do the dust and scratch removal, so it's got all these speckles. Um, and you're never going to want this picture printed huge to represent you and no. your husband on the beach. You could get no. so many better pictures of the two of you on the beach that could totally eclipse this. And something else I would like to point out, I know that we aren't here to critique logos, but this picture has a watermark on it. And this is something that I think a lot of wedding photographers don't get. And I would bet that I can guess how much you charge for weddings based on the way that your logo looks. And um, 
when when you create a logo for a business, whatever business it might be, you need to think about the vibe of the type of client that you're trying to go after. And for wedding clients, that vibe is timeless. It's uh, loving. It's elegant. It's like professional. Professional. It's all of like... these things. This logo looks to me like you are a DJ from 1995. <laughs> it's like a triple... Uh... Yin yang. Yeah, it, it just it doesn't say weddings at all, at all, and and uh, it even goes as far as, as using a phrase like memories of tomorrow. Yeah, which, which I try to steer people away from. Like obviously, if your business is rolling, I'm not going to tell you to change your business name, but I would just tell you to reconsider your marketing strategy of like who you're trying to get to hire you, and then how you're going to go about getting people to hire you. And I don't think that. That a logo like this, I can't. If you went to Brides Magazine or you went to uh, The Knot, you would never see that sort of branding no. on there. And I bet that I can guess your prices. I bet I can guess what your website looks like. I bet I can guess what the other pictures in your portfolio look like based off of this logo. And it's not a positive feeling. And so my, my, my whole thought is, is like, think about your pictures, figure out like, yes, you've taken a very clever shot here, but the image overall still isn't good. It, it doesn't feel um, elegant. Nothing about this feels elegant. It feels clever. It feels, it feels like you are the venue photographer at the Bahamas or at some destination photographer, yep. and you've come up with this clever shot, and you're at the beach, and, and you're, you're at that stage. You know? it, doesn't, it doesn't scream that I'm shooting at the most fancy resorts in New York. Yeah, and I'm yeah, at yeah. That, so just keep that in mind. Just wanted to throw that out there because this, some of the other ones have watermarks maybe and I completely overlooked them, but this overall, like that does not look like a wedding logo to me. This looks very similar to a shot I've seen in your portfolio. I don't know if it's in your portfolio, but it's you probably took not it. in my portfolio. I took a shot very similar to this with a very similar looking bride. I think that I might say this image is better than my shot but there's something weird going on with her eyes. It looks like she has a, uh, like a, a Batman and Robin mask on or something. She I would tend to think that like one, shooting in limos myself, like it's very hard to get good light in there. Oh, the I light, know. the windows are tinted. There's no skylight coming Color in. Color of the lights in there is always crazy. Yeah, so like you kind of have to be forced to go into the black and white. And then because of that, you may have to dodge and burn a lot on their face to get things to pop out. Yeah. So I'm kind of thinking maybe that's... Why is, why is the top above her eye white, though? Like, I'm trying to figure out where the light is reflecting up to, to hit that. It looks like, notice how she's, she's lit on her chin and cheek. But and then, then right there's a the dark eyes. area under her eye, and then it gets bright right under her eye. And then it gets... I, I just, I can't figure out what's going on here. It's, it's like there's a mirror up under I mean, her or be, something. Could it be the flowers are somehow The reflecting? flowers are reflecting the light back. I've I don't seen know. that happen before. Um, you would think yeah. it'd be a very subtle light from soft well, flowers. I, I bet you it's so dark in that limo that, you know, any light that's coming through there is really reflecting off the flowers. Maybe. Maybe that's it. But... Um, Man, I, I love the vibe of the shot. The bride is beautiful. I love the fact that she's looking out the window rather than looking at the camera. Um, the only thing that I have bad to say about this picture is the, the lighting on her face. And the thing is you could, like, I don't retouch a lot of my images. If I had a shot like this and I wanted this to go in the front of my website, you could easily just go in there and kind of, like, clone out some of the shadows to make it not so obvious. You know what might be happening? I think it looks like the sun is behind her. Yeah. And it's, it's like you said, it's firing so Straight hard into, into those flowers that it's coming up and lighting her. And then like under her nose is super blown out too. But then you can see above her nostril, there's a shadow. So it's yeah. the classic lighting from below. Yeah, which usually you light people from below to make them look evil and on fire. And obviously the photographer didn't do this. This is a captured moment. And it's great for what it is. It's just, I guess I'm, I'm trying to decide what my rating is, but I'm, I'm ready when you are. Three, two, two one. Three. Three. It's, it's good. I don't, think, I don't think any bride who sees this is going to go into detail about, like, where is the light coming from and where is it reflecting? For, for people who don't know photography, it's, it's like a, 
what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's like a subliminal thing. Yeah. They don't know why it looks like that, but they kind of think like she looks mean or mad yeah. or something, and you definitely don't want that vibe with your photos. Um, if you had the time to stop and look at the screen and zoom in, which I know a lot of times you just totally overlook that. I know I take pictures when I light it and I just say like, yes, that's the mood that I'm used to getting and I don't examine it enough. If you did, you could have said like maybe the flowers, if you recognize the problem, the flowers need to be moved to the other hand or something to see if that fixes the lighting. But uh, this could have been a single frame and then he had to get out of the limo because she's about to walk down the aisle. You sure. Know? It's so, a solid shot. And man, like if... If the if the sun was coming from the right and it you know it just hit her on the front of the face a little bit, oh my gosh, it would be so beautiful. Yeah. But uh, that's the way it goes on wedding days. This is interesting. A coal mine. I don't know where they are. <laughs> this is an interesting shot. The way it's lit, like I always like for my bride, so I would I would put the light on the left side. And then I would Photoshop out my assistant holding it. But I I like the way that the shadows are falling here, even though the shadow's falling on her face, like it, it works for me. All right. Three. Three. Solid shot. The I, I love I love her arm up laughing. Like that feels so real to me. I feel like she wins the energy, but then he kind of takes away a little. He he, he kind of is giving the deer in the headlights. He like, is. is this working? He should be looking, looking at, her. at her. and yeah. boom, that that would be amazing. And you know, sometimes that's you coaching them to do that. Sometimes it's just firing off five frames while this emotion is happening, mm -hmm. and then the next frame or the previous frame, he is looking down. Like some of this stuff happens so quick. I have friends who say, you know, why do you shoot seven frames so quickly? you're not capturing the moment. And I'm like, well, I know the moment's happening, but the difference, this is, I guess, something I learned from Peter Hurley, the difference between the first half of a second to the next half a second can be so big that my fear is that I undershoot, I take five pictures, and then you wind up with them both having the weird face. Mm -hmm. But then in your mind, you were like, I got it, because the emotion was so great. So I tend to say, like, fire 20 shots in this scene, and then you know that you can just pick out the best one. And maybe this is the best one, but I feel like his, his expression's a little off. I'm personally not a fan of this real mid tony edit. Hmm. Um, I, I like blacks to be black, and I like whites to kind of yeah. pop. To me, it's, yeah. it's so close, and it's such a minor thing. You could just throw it in levels and, or curbs and, and quit, fix that. But if that's your style, and all your images have that look, then you know maybe it would be weird having the blacks go really black, but... I'm trying to think of what size light source he used because you can see the shadow on her face it's got a little feather to it but then i'm also noticing you know how much light there is hitting her dress down below and maybe maybe it's just the lights far enough back to to hit her and hit the dress evenly i wonder if it was dodged back it looks good though. I really like the lighting on the couple. It's interesting lighting over the, his back shoulder like that. I think you have about 50 pictures on your website that look just like this. Do I? <laughs> With neon orange skin. Her skin's not neon orange. No, no, no. Yours are. That one's not. I think I shot neon orange for like my second year, first year of doing photography, and then you never like lived it down. <laughs> this one's tough for me, but... I'm gonna be a little, a little rough. Okay. Three, two, one, two. I was right there. I think if I would have given it a three, it would have. I think two point five is. Yeah. I love the the mood, the lighting, like mm -hmm. everything about that is classic. Um, her expression's a little weird, mm -hmm. but I don't know if a bride would be discouraged from that. So, here's some things that I've I've found about this, like. I, I love this pose. I love the hand on the hip looking over the left shoulder. I do that a lot. Um, I think her dress is a little hot for me. What I would have done in this situation is I probably would have added some sort of light over to the right side. It would have, it would have cut her out a little bit. It, you would have been able to lower the light on the background. And you would have been able to lower the ambient light on the dress by doing that. Even like a third of a stop, two thirds of a stop. The other thing that I would do is the flowers 
look very robotic right now because she's like holding them out at you. I tell my brides to relax the wrist and let the flowers fall. And when they do that, you can see the whole hand, you can see the flowers, and then you can also see the, the stem, stem the coming out too. In many cases, it's the ring too. It's the left hand. Right. Um, so I feel like her body, aside from her left wrist, looks great. The pose looks great. It's just that expression on the face is a little weird. And then I just feel like it's a little overexposed for me. I feel like though, where you may light this, mm -hmm. I feel like it's it's within the realm of bringing back the detail. I sure. think you could, even without dodging and burning, you could pull the sliders just enough to You're get right. it. You're right. What are your thoughts with marketing, mm -hmm. with beautiful girls like this who do have, I mean, I don't the mind tattoos. the tattoo because this girl is so naturally beautiful. I think the tattoo, it, it, it adds a little flair to the picture that's like, this is the type of photography I do. Like I'm still a high-end photographer, but I can still have fun and I'm young and everything yeah. like that. Like you have to think about that, not with the clients that you take on, obviously take on as many jobs as you can, but you have to consider- The image you're putting out. Yeah, what are you putting out there to book more work? And so if this girl was dressed in some, you know, ridiculous gown. Yeah, the, and she had the, the chains on it. You wouldn't put that in your portfolio. Or she has like all the crazy stuff over her hair. Yeah, and, it's, you and know, a nose ring or something like that would probably be too much if you're trying to go for the classic bride. But this girl looks like a very classic bride to me, but she also has the, the tattoo sleeves, which is cool, but it's not offensive to me. Like, I didn't even think about that. I'm, I'm looking at her. I'm looking at her pose. I'm looking at her face long before I ever look at her arm. Interesting. This is cool. I am ready when All you right. are. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Four? Four. We agree. This is an interesting shot because you might turn off a lot of clients with something like this. Really? Um, I. It's. It's not. It's not elegant. And it's not classic, you know? This seems something straight up my alley. Like, I would love to take more stuff like this. I, I had think this bride awesome. and groom, and I saw the wall there. I mean, even the ground. Like, look yeah, at the look, cobblestones. Yeah, like, cool. it is so graphic in nature. Yeah, yeah. And then I think the photographer, like, it would almost be a disservice, I think, to shoot natural light and have this really soft. Well, now that you've seen this, I wouldn't have even considered this as an option. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now I see it, and I'm like, that's awesome. Um, but again, this, this is really saying so much about the photographer to me. This image, like I, I would venture to say that this photographer has other wacky images like this. Like the lighting's wacky, the pose is wacky. You need to Not, be clever with wacky. wacky. This, is okay. just, this is very commercial fashion, hard light, everything's sharp and crisp and it's, it's just a single light. It's not like wacky. Wacky there, you in do, the sense You and I do this all the time, looking into the light not having them look in, usually when I have them look into the light, I do a few frames, and most times I don't actually prefer that shot, but I just think it's, it's, it's just so modern, and I, I love it's this. It's very modern, and that you... And it's with a classy enough looking couple mm -hmm. that it's still, if this was, if, if you had this exact same shot, but the bride and groom were obese, or they had tons of tattoos, and they looked super alternative, it would be a completely different genre. Yeah. But because they're classy enough and it looks high end, it now just makes it look like you're also capable of pulling off really modern looking images. I agree. I feel like Pi Jerza and, and Lynn and Jerza have images that have this kind of um, Maybe. sharper. Yeah, look they've to done it. some stuff with some of their higher end clients. Like, to me, it's awesome. It's definitely awesome. It's just so posed and so stylized i think i think this will go out of style but a lot of wedding photography stuff's going to go out of style you know what i mean this just it's not your typical wedding picture but it's cool because of that yeah. but you just have to figure out is that the direction where i want to go are these the type of pictures that i want to try to book clients with or am i going to go the more romantic black and white or am i going to go the more poppy color neon skin like you go i think I think there's room for both. I think okay. you can have this mixed in with a couple classy shots. You may even put a more classic shot of this couple side by side. So when the bride's going through your website, they're yeah. like, wow, that's a beautiful mm -hmm. background. 
oh, wow, it's the same couple. Look at that's really interesting. And yeah. they get this vibe that you're a capable photographer. Yeah, yeah. And then you get that emotional reaction we're talking about where they're saying, wow, like, that's cool how my husband likes this picture, but I like the one before it, but we both like him now because yeah. of that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think it's a solid four image. Cool. I believe this is the last image. Yeah. So this is kind of in the same vein as the previous one. Wow. You think those light rays in the sky are real? That can't be. There's no telling. Can't be real. This is where I wish we had the high res. I can't even tell what his face <laughs> is doing. But. Oh, man. All right, I think I'm ready. Okay. Three. Give it a four, I give it a three. Man, I wanted to give this a four. Like, so much about this is awesome. I the sky is a, amazing. I wanted to give it a five. I just couldn't push myself. A five. I, I can't give it a five. Like, I, I, I just saw, I was having a conversation with somebody on the F-Stoppers group just yesterday who took a better picture like this with the umbrella being lit. Um, and I wouldn't give that one a five. See, I, I kind of don't like the umbrella being lit thing. I feel like so many photographers do it. It's one of those things I see a lot. Yeah. I guess if you have to shoot a bride and groom in the rain, it's it's like one of the few tricks that you can do. You know, yeah. um, I think this works well just because of the drama in the sky. I mean, yeah. you have like I don't know what's going on here. You have like the sun setting on the far left with the mountains. It's very subtle, and then the sun is to the far right up in the air, coming through the clouds. Like there's so much drama in here, and then what makes this to me, a four is the decor in the background. I mean, they definitely have spent a lot of money to oh, have all so of this in weird. the background. Oh, that's so weird. I thought that background was like a fishing no, it's dock like or something. candles and chandeliers. Wow, and that makes it even better. I wish that, that these candle had holders them. had candles in them lit. That would, oh my gosh, that would take it to the next level. The reason why I didn't give this a four, and I really want to give it a four, this is super low res, I'm having trouble seeing it, but it appears that the groom has a goofy look on his face and then the bride has no look on her face. And that kind of pulls me out of the image. This elegant, timeless, crazy shot looks goofy when I look at his face. And so that pulls me out of it. It's, this certainly should be in your portfolio, but oh my gosh, if you got that like perfect model couple, you do the same thing again, and the, the guy's going in for the kiss or something, and he's got one of the hands up on her face. Even this, like, I, it's hard to tell Lorez, you know, what level of attractiveness they both are. They look good. If you just had her, they ha you had them kiss each other, but you had mm -hmm. her face come to the camera, mm -hmm. I think even then or it like, would be. you know, the, 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 once again, they're doing the weird arms around the waist pose. He should, he should have that left hand in his pocket. I think that would look so much cooler. Look at the weight on his legs. He's got his knees locked. He's, he's, very, he's very awkward right now. He's, he's trying he's not, not to get feeling wet. comfortable. Yeah. What, what you need to tell your couple to do, I, in this situation, and trust me, I've shot pictures far worse than this, so not every picture I take is better than this by any means, but if I had the time and I had the, the moment of clarity, I would have said, hey, put your left hand in your pocket and put all of your weight on your right leg. So what you're gonna do there is you're gonna break the knee on the left leg, he's gonna, he's gonna relax, he's gonna lean back towards the right. Then the girl, she needs to do something with her hand. She could put it around her, his waist like she is. She could reach up and touch his face like she's talking to him or about to kiss him like the girl was with the little mm -hmm. girl earlier. Um, you know, having his hand all lit right behind their face, it just kind of... A lot of this stuff you can't fix in the moment. You just got to knock these shots out and move on to the next thing at a wedding. But if I'm critiquing this as hard as I possibly can... Those things all kind of stand out to me. Yeah. And to me, though, it. this is an image that I don't think would leave my portfolio. Like, that looks so cool. If, if you go in this style, and the last two pictures had that style, if this is like, it's raining, what can I pull off, and you get this, mm -hmm. but then the rest of your images have a film, natural light, bright, airy thing, mm -hmm. this won't fit in there at all. But if you're able to balance them out, like, I, take, I like to take photos that have more of a vibe like this, more dramatic, yeah. lit, have this cool thing going on, um, you know, I don't think this would leave my portfolio. I do, I do really like it. I do really like it. I feel a little bad giving it a three. But uh, ugh, 
I just, I want everything to be the same except that guy. I want his pose and his face to be a little different. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Well, so that's the rating that we've given these images. We are going to post all of these in the post so yes. that you can go to the community, you need an account, and then you can go through and you can rate them as well. Um, I would love to do this again and, and encourage people to submit more photos from the actual wedding itself. So oh, like that's an interesting idea. Ceremonies, receptions, no like some of my pictures. some of my favorite pictures with the most emotion and energy are on the dance floor, you know, or at the receptions. Um, same thing with getting ready. We had no getting ready pictures besides maybe the girl and the, the flower girl. So mm -hmm. maybe we do this again okay. and we encourage people to upload yes. pictures that are a wider range because you have to remember if you're trying to book weddings, these are important pictures to have but you have to have the full scope. You have to have the rings. You have to have the flowers. You have to have the cake. You have to have the venue. You have to have the ceremony. You have to have the groomsmen and bridesmen at the ceremony. The bridesmen? Brides. Maids. Bridesmaids. The groomsmen and the bridesmaids at the ceremony. You have, I mean, there was no posed pictures with the whole wedding party in here. Those are really yeah, popular the, pictures. Yeah, th this group of pictures was so similar, it's kind of weird. I feel like we just critique posed pictures at a wedding. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do this again real soon. Stay tuned. Maybe we'll do it next week. We'll do a post on F-Stoppers that just says, hey, put your pictures here. Keep in mind, all of your pictures that we critique have to be on your portfolio. So all you have to do, take the URL from that page, post it in the comments, and the picture will show up, and then we'll critique it. But thanks yeah. for watching, guys. We'll be back.